It's Monday night, and you're the bedside nurse assigned to a 15-year-old that had a Ross procedure earlier today for a bad aortic valve. Systolic blood pressure parameters in the order say 90 to 110, but this is your monitor. So you call the doctor, and they say the arterial line is whippy. We're not going to treat that. And here's your cuff pressure. So what's going on? First, we need to talk about what a normal arterial line tracing is. Here is a fairly typical tracing for a kid in the CICU. At the start of systole, there is a rapid increase in the blood pressure. The peak of the tracing is often a bit rounded as pressure begins to drop towards the end of the ventricular contraction. Sometimes you see a notch, indicating the closure of the aortic valve. This is diastole, when the aortic valve is closed, the heart is relaxing, and the blood pressure drops as blood distributes throughout the circulation. Now there are a lot of things that can make an arterial line look weird both mechanical and problems with the patient. This video is specifically talking about this issue, the whip. If you Google this, you'll see the word under damped for this phenomena, but I've never heard anyone say that at the bedside. In pediatrics, whip is associated with catheters in large arteries and larger kids, thus our 15-year-old after the Ross procedure. Whip overestimates the systolic blood pressure and underestimates the diastolic pressure. So how do you decide if your hypertensive patient actually has arterial line whip and doesn't need intervention? Compared to a normal tracing, the whippy arterial line will have a faster rise and fall without the more typical rounded appearance at the peak. And on the downslope, there are multiple oscillations rather than one notch, and they can be deep. Since whip is a problem with the equipment, not the patient, the cuff pressure should be accurate. And while the systolic and diastolic pressures are not to be trusted, the mean arterial pressure usually can be.